What is up guys? My name is Billy here with Aspire Realty Group. We wanted to put together a video for those of you who might be PCSing to Anchorage or that are already stationed here. You know, you get orders to Alaska and the first thing you ask yourself, what is there to do in Alaska? Where am I going? I need more information. We put together this short video to kind of do a broad overview for you. Uh, you know, we're going to cover some things to do in Anchorage. And we're going to give you some links and then we're going to go a little bit outside about an hour in each direction and talk about some of the things you can do. What is up everybody, Justin and Billy here with Aspire Realty Group. We wanted to put it together a quick video for those of you who are PCSing to Alaska or that are currently stationed at J-Bear on things to do in the area. Yeah, so obviously want to get on here and then as you guys are new most likely to Alaska or currently in the process of PCSing, give you an idea of kind of what there is to do around that like hour within an hour and a half of Anchorage and of course J-Bear. So as we kind of think about things within the area and like I said about an hour or so away you sure. know so just south of Anchorage is Girdwood and Alyeska Resort so go ahead. Uh, Alyeska is in the top 10 for snowfall mm -hmm. it has the longest continuous double black diamond run in North America putting it in the top 10 for all resorts in North America mm -hmm. uh, when you're there at Alyeska there's a lot of things to do you know there's terrain parks for if you want to go watch little kids do backflips yeah. and feel bad about your skills uh, <laughs> there's also um, you know several long runs and then obviously you could take the tram up there's opportunities yeah. there both in wintertime and summertime yep. uh, obviously you have you know downhill mountain biking and things like that in the summertime the rest Restaurants are still open. In the wintertime, we have you know snowboarding, skiing. We got um, you know trail running. You have snowshoeing, skiing. cross country skiing, hella snow skiing. machining, hella skiing, yeah. cat skiing. You got all that yep. stuff. Uh, not to be overwhelmed, you know they do have a school there as well, so where they do training for you know all skill levels, um, young and old. Yep. And then of course, as Billy already said, that Alaska was uh, just snowfall ends up being within the top ten resorts in the nation. Right now, it is number one in the year of 2022 for snowfall this year. They're the first to break over 400 inches so far. Yes. Um, they opened with over 300 inches of snowfall on opening day, which is more than a lot of resorts get in a calendar year. It's pretty wild. We started, started yeah. early in October with snow this year. Yeah. It's pretty neat. But, you know, just to kind of give you an idea, they had almost 760 inches of snowfall at the top of Alyeska last year, which is a phenomenal ski year. So, right. um, but... We don't just live a whole lot of time in the winter. We, we, we do. It is Alaska. But true. we do have an <laughs> awesome summer, um, and so there is still a lot of things to do in the summer in Gerwood. So one of the things that's notable is uh, Crow Creek Mine. You know, so a yep. lot of people are going there. If you're into history, this is a historic mine. Yep. Pretty neat. they got a bunch of outbuildings and a little stream running through there. People mm -hmm. book weddings and things like that there. Yep. There's also lots of hiking in the area, right? So you have Winter hiking. Creek Hand Tram, which is like right behind... Pretty much on the sidewalk right behind Alaska Resort. Uh, yeah. You can actually take a hand tram across the river. It's pretty neat. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you have a lot of hiking. You have downhill biking. You can take the tram and even some of the chairlifts up in the summertime with your bike and an offload and be able to do all the single tracks at Alaska Resort. They do rent bikes. They rent gear there um, for downhill biking. And then, of course, the single track stuff. You can also go up on the tram and then ride the entire mountain down on the cat tracks. Um, and so there's a whole lot to do. And just, of course, just outside of uh, Gerwood, there is, you know, fishing. There is kayaking. You can paddle board in the inlet. You can surf the board tide. That's what I was going to um, say. Yeah, which is, which is <laughs> awesome. awesome. Kind of a unique feature to, like, Cook Inlet. Right. You know, we have a really significant tidal exchange right there. Yeah. So, you know, as the tide comes in, you kind of get the board tide yes. effect. And you'll, can, you can see people out there kind of waiting on that board tide to come in. It's a ton of water moving really fast. It's the most excellent. Um, there's a lot of stuff to do along the highway there. You know, mm -hmm. as we move kind of backwards, uh, we run into Bird Creek, right? Um, so Bird Creek is, has a state campground there. They have both tent and RV hookups. Right, um, there's that runs along the trail that goes to the highway. It kind of goes all the way to Seward and Anchorage. Yeah, um, there is some fishing to be done there. There is some hiking. Uh, little known secret. So in the back of the state campground, right, right. there, 
uh, there's a like a fence road. You go down like 25 feet, and there's a public use cabin right there. Really? It's little to be known. Not yeah. a lot of people know about it. I don't think I even know. It's about like it. 40. You know, it's so close out of Anchorage. It's like 40 minutes out right. of Anchorage. That's a good place to throw a birthday party. Yeah. And I actually stay there during the slush cut for Alaska because Alaska would be a little overwhelmed right. uh, with the traffic. So Big we kind of we kind of come halfway back and then start stop right there at Bird Creek, stay mm -hmm. at that cabin. Pretty sweet setup. Yeah, and then, of course, obviously, you know, the highway between Anchorage and Gerwood uh, goes along the highway, and it's a super scenic highway, some of the most beautiful views you're ever going to see in both the winter and summer months. But we also get a migratory pattern of whales in the inlet, and so you'll see belugas, you'll see humpback whales. True. Um, we even get killer whale pods occasionally up in that way. But uh, so it's, it's, it's pretty common to go see whales in the inlet, especially the belugas. Um, and then we do have McHugh Creek right. and some other pull-offs and, and then many pull-offs along the highway for you guys to take in the scenery. And then, uh, yeah. For those of you that are into history, I would recommend stopping out at the Indian Valley Mine. So oh, it's yeah. a historic quartz it's mine right there. They have some recreational gold panning, so essentially they'll give you a scoop of dirt. You kind of pan that out. I actually found some silver and gold in that, so that was a good yeah. time. Um, you know, when you're going by, McHugh Creek is right there. You know, so that is a can be a gnarly climb, right? So right. it actually, you know, right outside the parking lot, there's a waterfall. Right. Like, you know, That's like true. five minute walk, right? But, and as you keep going, the trail kind of parallels the McHugh Creek, mm -hmm. and it goes way back all the way up to McHugh Lake, right? Yeah, and you can actually see, um, there's another lake there, and I forget the name of it, but that one drains off into the um, Alaska Valley right. right there. Yeah. It's pretty neat. Yeah, and so of course, that's McHugh Creek. This is about halfway between uh, Gerwood and Anchorage. And so uh, can I, as we move further back into uh, Anchorage and towards Jay Bear, mm -hmm. um, you know, obviously we are not only going to have just one singular ski resort of Alaska, right, which is our, our biggest one and, like, probably the most notable one in Alaska, but, you know, uh, Anchorage in and of itself does have a few ski resorts actually within Five. Anchorage. So... Uh, we do ha we've got Hilltop, which is probably one of the more popular ones. True, yeah. When I was growing up, that was a good place. Uh, so their ski bus actually runs from the s schools on base and right. runs people out to that one. Right. Yep. You have Arctic Valley, which is actually on the military base. It's actually on Jay Bear, but it's also it's, uh, available for public use. Right, and I think they do a lot of racing and stuff out there. So like downhill, yeah. what is it, slaloms and things they like do that? They slalom and whatnot. Yep. Um, and then at uh, Arctic Valley, they also actually have a really cool inner tube run now. Yes. And so they got that got put in about a few years ago, and that's a great spot if you have kids, stuff like that. Um, even as an adult, I, it's actually that's a ton a good of time. fun. It's a good time. It's a, it's a good time. So they even have that uh, tubing too on Elmendorf, right? So you yeah. have um, Hilberg. They have you know kind of this. Uh, they have what they're calling a bunny hill. It's kind of right. steep, but you know then they have a couple good runs there too. But the tubing there is good. Right. You know, so that's a really good opportunity for those of you who want to kind of get to the back of post, stay on post, and kind of uh, do that thing. That's a good opportunity. Yeah. So, of course, now we're really kind of into Anchorage, and so we definitely want to cover in depth, like, what there is to do in Alaska's largest city, right? And so because we are the largest city and kind of the hub of Alaska, True. and just being in Alaska, there's a ton of things to do just inside Anchorage within 10 to 15 minutes. It's easy to be in the middle of nowhere within 25 minutes. Of leaving Jay Bear. Perfect exits. example, Potter's Marsh, right? Potter's it's literally, Marsh. it's pretty much the last exit right out of town. Right. Migratory birds come through there. They yep. got a cool little boardwalk you can go down. You can even see uh, the salmon spawning. Yeah. Right? And so we know that those. Can't fish it. Yeah, but, you can't uh, fish it. <laughs> the birds do a good job of, of fishing yeah, it, though, and that's pretty job. cool to watch. And then, too, you'll see um, migratory swans in there yep. in the summertime, so that's cool. Um, right there, too, at Rabbit Creek, they also have a uh, ski facility. So they have a shooting facility right there at Rabbit Creek. Yep. Uh, you can go up there. So if you're into skeet or clay sports, that's a good option for you. Mm -hmm. And then we'll come back to that, too, as we travel out, you know, down up north. Yep. And so uh, one of the biggest and probably most popular destinations within Anchorage for hiking is going to be Flat Top. Yeah. And so that's actually an, a state park. Uh, there's a state park directly attached to uh, one side of, of Anchorage, Really popular. There's a lot of really cool hikes back in there um, for all different groups of people. If you're right. a new hiker or an experienced one, there's a definitely a ton of different options for you. And uh, like I said, Flat Top is probably the biggest tourist attraction we have because it's really within like seven minutes of the highway. Right. So and there's a couple different accesses right there. there so are. like if you want to do a harder walk, mm -hmm. you, know, you can go to the backside of it, go up that way. Right. If you want to do an easier walk, you can go up the front. 
Uh, what's nice too about this area is you can actually access the Powerline Trail, right? Yeah. So that's going to get you back into the Chugach for all those backcountry experiences, mm -hmm. right? So you'll see a lot of people kind of skinning out that way, mm -hmm. going up that Powerline Trail, getting into the Chugach, and taking advantage of some of those peaks, both summer and winter, actually. Yep. And then Powerline Trail also connects what with Hilltop, and during the summer months, Hilltop offers, and in that area offers a lot of single track access, mm -hmm. and um, also, in the wintertime, they offer a lot of Nordic and cross-country ski, skate skiing access as well. So. I like to go up there and um, glass for sheep. Oh, right. Yeah. So yeah. in the summertime, I like to go up there and kind of practice my, mm -hmm. some of my skills and, and do that. Nice. So if you're a photographer, there's some really good opportunities to get close to yeah. game up there. And so, of course, as we are, obviously, this is all in the mountain section of Anchorage. We are surrounded by not just mountains, but, of course, the entire inlet and ocean. Mm -hmm. um, so Anchorage is kind of what they call bottlenecked by a lot of different scenery. It's which is great makes for some for uh, some fantastic views for homes, right? right? Because you're able to get mountain views and ocean views all in the uh, from the same locations. So it's pretty wild, actually. Yeah. yeah. Um, but as we kind of come further down into Anchorage. You know, Anchorage is one of the top cities in the United States for just the amount of bike trails we have and hiking trails within the actual city itself. So we have over 750 marked and mapped trails, which is pretty significant. You know, you can go online. We'll actually put some links down below for that trail map, so you guys yep. can check that out. Um, you know, the residual Anchorage area for bikes is pretty friendly. I mean, there's bike yeah. lanes everywhere. We have the Coastal Trail, yep. right? Uh, we have the um, Campbell Creek Trail. Campbell Creek Trail, right? Yep. And so you can fish, actually, some of these creeks. When I was you can. Kid. Yeah. yeah, you can actually fish for salmon in some of the creeks. And, of course, Ship Creek is probably one of the most known destinations. Yeah. And you'll see people down there all summer long. This is down by the Port of Anchorage uh, at Ship Creek. But you'll see people down there all summer long uh, catching the different salmon runs that come into uh, Ship Creek at, at the Anchorage Port. Yeah, and I've, so, said, I've caught silvers and kings out of there. So yeah. it's a pretty good run. It's pretty awesome. Yeah. yeah. And so, um, you know, attached to the Coastal Trail on one side, the Coastal Trail is one of the most well-known uh, trails in Anchorage. It starts in downtown and goes seven miles all the way to an area called Kincaid Park, which Love is on Kincaid. the far west side of Anchorage. Right. As, far as, you, as far west as you can go, it's attached. It's right next to the airport. Um, but Kincaid Park offers a ton of outdoor amenities that most places don't have. Literally so. something for everybody there, right? So, you know, there you can find people doing um, dirt biking competition there. They do single track. You know, you have people playing Frisbee golf. Uh, archery. Archery. You can actually hunt in Kincaid. So right. they have a couple different passes there. You, they, they have um, a tag for black, both black bear and moose out of Kincaid yeah. that you could take with a bow. So that's kind right. of neat. Yeah, so, so bow hunting right within, right in Anchor City Limits, which is, right. which is kind of crazy, right? Uh, but... Welcome to Alaska. <laughs> so um, things are a little different here, and that's because we are just a large state. We have a right. large abundance of wildlife and a much smaller population. The population of Alaska is only roughly uh, like 650,000. Right. Yeah. So and not, the majority of it is in the borough and in Anchorage. Right. And so you have a state that's two and a half times the size of Texas with a minimal population group. Right. So, uh, but we love our outdoor stuff. So True. outdoor stuff is really uh, part of life here, right? Mm -hmm. Whether it be just going out and taking pictures or if you actually get out and get into the wilderness. Um, there's, like we keep saying, there's something for everyone, you know. And so if you look on the J Bear website, there's lots of opportunities there. Uh, they have a tab. Uh, it's like Get Outdoors or something like that. Mm -hmm. And it's got a bunch of links and material to kind of get tied into that outdoor scene. Uh, that brings me into the MWR and Post. So the MWR and a lot of the local... Um, places where you can get gear and things like that are super robust, right, because yes. it's so it's such a popular thing to do here. The MWR and base, they allow you to rent RVs, pull behind trailers. Right. They got four-wheelers, snow machines, boats, boats all believe. kinds of stuff. Yeah. They got backpacks. They got camp, regular camping gear, yeah. all the way down to, like, berry scoopers, fishing poles, all the stuff you might need. Something, too, to think about, um, the MWR has lots of outings that they do, right? So oh, out of Seward, they're doing, yeah. um, you know, deep-sea fishing charters. There's cabins all over the place that you can rent. Biking. Um, biking on land. base itself. Yeah. All those lakes that are on the base are actually stocked by the uh, Alaska Fishing Game. Right. So, you know, as a kid, we used to take the canoe back there, cruise around, and you catch in lake trap. Yeah. You know, landlock yeah. salmon all day. And so just Jay Bear of itself, you know, understands that Alaska is very robust in outdoor adventure, and they do a very good job of supplying and uh, giving you guys the opportunities to go and do a lot of these things. And, of course, like as we had mentioned before, you know, um, but 
you were saying like J Bear garage sales were a great place yes. to catch so, equipment as piece of people are PCSing out. Keep in mind, so people are always PCSing in and PCSing out, and so this can be a gear intensive place, right? And so when we leave, maybe like so for example for me, when I left here I went to Hawaii, right? So you don't need all that same stuff. So I had a rad garage sale and people. You don't need, a, you don't need a snowboard and no. ski stuff. No, you Hawaii. don't need snowboard and skis. <laughs> it turns out you don't need pack rafts or any of that kind of stuff. <laughs> so I had to rebuy it, but you know, it's right. whatever. Uh, but really, though, and so uh, the garage sales on Southside and on J Bear are pretty awesome, and it's yeah. a good way to get geared up. We also have a lot of consignment shops, too, right. and our REI here in town is super robust. It's probably the most well stocked one that I've ever seen. And yeah, it's a, it's, you know, obviously REI understands that Alaska, once again, is an outdoor state, and so they do a very good job of maintaining a lot of outdoor gear because we do get a lot of people and a lot of tourists that come in and buy a lot of that stuff. True. So. Um, but obviously, so we covered a lot of just what's in Anchorage. You're able mm -hmm. to literally do everything. So paddle boarding, kayaking, hunting, I mean, gold panning, hunting, there's all gold kinds of panning, stuff. fishing. I mean, just inside of Anchorage, biking, single tracks. I mean, all this stuff. Skiing, and if you're a history buff, right. I mean, there's lots of museums, right? Uh, what's a children's museum? The Imaginarium. Yep, Imaginarium. You ever seen this thing? Really they cool get, they have like a um, museum downtown, like a whole bubble exhibit. Yeah, you know, you get to pull a, a little cool rope and bring. Yeah, <laughs> definitely a lot of like hands-on stuff for kids at the yeah. museum, and of course. You know, the Anchorage Museum in itself uh, brings in a lot of different exhibits throughout the year. I think um, we got the Van Gogh, the traveling Van Gogh. We do Gogh have the Van Gogh coming up yeah, pretty, pretty quick. Yeah. So, obviously, this is like right outside of J Bear. So, the first few, you know, uh, we have two military access points in Anchorage mm -hmm. uh, that go to J Bear. And then, of course, the first two highway points outside of Anchorage, on just heading north of Anchorage, are going to be J Bear Access. Right, and so keeping in mind, you know, as you move north, a lot of people are living in the valley and then commuting into J Bear and mm -hmm. Anchorage. Uh, so you see this huge migration of folks kind of in the evenings and afternoons. Right. Uh, so if we wanted to kind of push out that way, kind of towards Eagle River, there's even a lot of recreational opportunities there as well. Right. Right. So you got Mount Baldy. It's a super popular place for people mm -hmm. to go hike. I think we've got some rad B-roll footage of me sliding down that bad boy. And then yeah. uh, <laughs> we do. And then so... You know, you got that, and there's lots of trails there, right? So you have Eagle River Nature Center, yep. right, which is, you know, a little spot. bit off the road, but it's a membership-based uh, club, if you will. Uh, it's pretty minimal. I want to say it's like $25 a year. It's super small. Yeah, not very uh, but what that does is it gives you access to lots of free classes and things, right? So I've taken mm -hmm. skijorning. I've taken a dog sledding class. The owl watching experience is pretty rad. Like if you're into um, animals, you would be into that. Surprisingly, it's pretty entertaining. You know, they have you go out in the middle of winter, in the middle of the night, right. you know, and try to be real quiet. And of course, everything is crunchy because it's all frozen, right? And uh, you can actually hear these owls calling back and forth, and they right. give you a lot of information about that. That's cool. So it's really neat. Um, two, they have public use cabins and yurts all around there, right? So around January, they do a fat, tag, a fat tire bike race that kind of moves up that, the Eagle River. Mm -hmm. And so we like to go out there and put a big campfire and then hand out the racers um, yeah. gummy bears as they go by because that's, you know, that's good fuel. Right. So. Yeah. So, of course, and also from the Nature Center is a ton of different trails mm -hmm. um, that head back into, uh, once again, you know, Chugach National Park and all that. Um, and so, you know, once again, just outside of J Bear is Eagle River, uh, and we have a lot of military that ended up leaving the Eagle River because mm -hmm. of the first exit towards Anchorage is True. is Fort Rich side of, of J Bear. Right. So, um, and of course, it's a really convenient spot. It's very kind of it's a smaller community, uh, very close to Anchorage. So you don't have all of the amenities of Anchorage, but you're within 10 to 15 minutes. And so you do have a nice, tight-knit community that's immediately attached to the more. And they do area. have some good breweries and stuff out they there. Have they have, uh, you know, the restaurants. There. There's not a ton of restaurants right. out there. If you like, like beer, Anchorage is a great Anchor's spot. Anchorage is a great place for <laughs> So they got Odd Man Rush, man. Go check that out. It's yeah. a really cool build-out. You go in, they, you know, they did the walls with, like, hockey sticks and reclaimed right. wood and stuff. It's a neat setup. Yeah. So I would definitely recommend checking that out. And oftentimes they have food trucks outside there. And right. then uh, in Eagle River proper, I mean, there's uh, ice skating. There's mm -hmm. all kinds of stuff you can do uh, in the wintertime. You see, and as you drive past there, you see a lot of people kind of uh, right. ice fishing. Yep. So you'll see them kind of, they'll have their, uh, their huts set up like that, and they'll be fishing on the lake. Yeah. And so obviously going from Eagle River, we're going to go a little further north. We're going to hit Chugiak, you know, uh, Birchwood, Thunderbird Falls. There's a lot of like lakes Birchwood. and yeah. Oh, yeah. float plane lakes and uh, miniature airstrips and stuff like that for small planes because Alaska has, you know, some of the most uh, small planes and uh, private pilots per capita we do. in the world. We actually have the largest float plane 
lake and uh, seaplane, uh, uh, what, airport in the world, right? Yeah. Off mm -hmm. Lake Hood in Anchorage. Mm -hmm. But, you know, so as we move forward, or, you know, north, we, we hit Thunderbird Falls. Thunderbird Falls. Thunderbird Falls is nice, right? Yeah. So it's a pretty short walk. That one is less safe for mile, beginners. Right? It's less than less than a quarter mile. Mm -hmm. um, you go up. It's pretty impressive waterfalls, actually. Yeah. It can get a little steep in the wintertime, so I would recommend bringing ice cleats so mm -hmm. you do not slide down right. into the gully. Uh, but other than that, you know, you really it's pretty... Um, yeah. I mean, it's you're able to walk basic. down on the falls, and it's a less than a quarter mile of a hike. So it's super accessible for most people. It's actually handicap accessible for a lot of people. That's true. Um, sure. But you can come down off the main trail. You actually can hike down into the falls, and it's super nice. It's a great spot. It's actually a major, it's a major tourist destination. I've actually gone Wednesday. swimming in there. The water is cold. <laughs> I can only imagine. It's glacier runoff. <laughs> yeah, so, of course, moving from Thunderbird Falls, let's move a little further north. That's going to give us to, you know, towards the Butte, the Hay Flats. You so know, the Butte, right? River. So think about Palmer, right? So that was the experimental farms back in the day, right? So right. the uh, University of Alaska Fairbanks actually has kind of like a remote school there where they still do these um, agricultural projects and things like that. Yep. So you can actually take classes there, right, on organic gardening, basket weaving, uh, hide tanning. Right. There's an assortment of stuff. There's a lot of things to do right there. And let's not forget the Butte, right? So we got the the race, the Alaska Raceway is in Alaska there. Alaska Raceway is there, there. That is a uh -huh. hoot. That is a good time, right? Yeah. And then you have Jim's Creek right there. So a lot of people, if you're into power sports, that is the place to go. So it's a good mix of like water crossings. You will be wet. You will never get rid of that silt. You know, once you cross the river, you're right. actually in sand dunes. Right. You know, and you can ride those sand dunes all the way out to For the glacier. For a long time. Yep. And people do that in both winter and summer. So I go in the summertime. We do lots of water crossings. That is a good time. And in the wintertime, you can do the same thing. It's all frozen over. You can ride bikes, right. walk, yep. drive your car. You can go all the way out to the Kinnick Glacier. Yeah, it's a good time. So uh, a lot of access points to get into backcountry Alaska from a lot of places within short distance of Jay Bear. Absolutely. So as we go from Butte, you know, the hay flats, which obviously have a lot of moose, you know, oh, typically. Yes. And yes. then that brings us into what we call the Matsu Valley. So obviously, Wasilla Palmer and the main populations areas of the Matsu Valley, or what we call the valley, the right. Matsu Borough, right? So it's, an, it's a large area, you know. It's larger than the state of Rhode Island. Right. Yeah. So obviously some things to do in Palmer are going to be the state fair. Right. So lot, the state fair is a big thing. We have a lot of people coming from all over the state of Alaska. Um, it's, real, it's a lot of fun. There's rides. We actually have a lot of outdoor concerts. Yes, And then, we of course, do. we have the massive vegetables because we get, like, 24-hour sunlight all summer long. Right, yes. Yeah, so it's like a 700-pound pumpkin or something crazy Something like that. crazy. You know, too, it brings out a lot of local vendors as it well. Does. So, right, you kind of get a lot of handmade crafts and you get to meet a lot of folks that way. Yep. That's a good situation. And then Hatcher's Pass is part of Palmer. Right, that's true. You know, so Hatcher's Pass is kind of unique, right? Yeah. So um, there's some historic gold mines and stuff up there. there there's are. lots of trails, right? You, there's lots of opportunities for both backcountry skiing and snowboarding. Uh -huh. uh, you can get into cross-country skiing back there. I do quite a bit on Archangel Road. Yeah. That's a good time. Uh, but in recent years, they've added Ski Tuck, which is like a um, single-run ski resort out there. So that's starting to get pretty popular. And then also, too, out that same direction, you have Government Peak Access, right, uh -huh. which has all those uh, lit trails of circuits out there. Yep. Uh, they also have kind of the big uh, chalet there that you can mm -hmm. rent for events. And then a pretty righteous sledding hill, actually. Yeah, the sledding hill's pretty awesome. It's actually a little scary if you're not familiar with <laughs> sledding. <laughs> but uh, there's also a ton of backcountry and snow machine access. I say True. snow machine. For those who are not from Alaska, it is the term a snowmobile for you. But, or snow go, uh, depending on where you or, are yeah, in Alaska. Right, exactly. So, um, but a lot of uh, backcountry access for backcountry snowboarding, skiing, and then, of course, like I said, the snow machining uh, is awesome back in there as well. True. And so There's literally trails everywhere. It's like you go yeah. into the valley, like there'll be a bike trails on one side of the road. And then the other side of the road, you got two track where people are riding four wheelers and, and snow right. machines and stuff. Yep. And so, like, I was telling some guys, you know, when I was a kid, I used I lived in Wasilla, and so I literally would ride my four wheeler from my house in the back of Wasilla all the way to downtown, and I would park it out front, and that's how I'd get to work. Right. There's like kind of a different uh, lifestyle out there. It is a little different. You know, yeah. somewhat rural, right? So you had the experimental farms in Palmer, mm -hmm. and so you still see that. You know, there's potato farms and stuff out there. Yep. People are going, hey. Um, you're, that's a, a lot of people that are into equestrian stuff are always are also out there, right? Right. So good setup for that. Yep. And so right next to Palmer, literally is Wasilla. Wasilla is probably the more populated section of of the uh, Matsu Borough in the valley. Right. Um, you know, and just of course 
they don't allow within the city limits anymore the uh, four wheeling and snow machining kind of stuff um, as they used to. But you know, you still uh, are able to access a lot of trails that are ran by the borough in the state That's from true. people's houses. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of people typically have a lot of toys, a lot of side by side snow machines, four wheelers, boats, river boats, uh, rafts, etc. Because there's so much to do, so close. There to, are so many lakes out there. Right, a lot of lakes. So many lakes. Um, honestly, like, if you were to look at the overhead map, it's mostly lakes. Right. And a lot of those lakes are stocked by uh, Alaska Fish and Game. Mm -hmm. So what that means is they have landlocked salmon, you know, right. they have good trout runs. Yeah. If you move farther north, you're going to see some invasive species like pike. Yeah. Those are actually pretty fun to catch. If you catch those, do not throw them back. Right. Um, and so, of course, if we move from Wasilla a little bit closer to Houston and Big Lake, we do actually have the lake called Big Lake. It is, right. is probably one of, and it is one, uh, is Alaska's probably most recreational used lake in, like, the state of Alaska. Yeah, so, that's, pretty, that's true. You know, there's uh, vacation rentals there. Mm -hmm. You know, you can get uh, people that have their condos on VRBO. Right. That is a live scene in the summertime. Yes. You know, people are going to be out there on their lake boats doing uh, jet skiing. They're mm -hmm. going to be doing tubing. Uh, wakeboarding, all that kind of stuff. That's definitely lake life, you know, and that's yeah. less than an hour out of town. Yeah, and so there's two marinas, and so they have boat rentals, jet ski rentals, all kinds of stuff right there at Big Lake for you to recreate in the summertime. And, of course, in the wintertime, Big Lake's also a hopping spot because you also have the Iditarod, True. which runs right through Big Lake. It does. And then you also have the Iron Dog, which also runs right through Big Lake as well. And so you'll see quite a winter presence when a lot of these big, huge, world-renowned events are going on. You know, the longest dog race in the world and the longest snow machine race in the world are both take off from Big Lake. Yeah, and I think the headquarters so, is in Las right? It is, yes. Yeah. And so it's all, so this is all within an hour, hour and ten minutes of Anchorage is all this here for you. And so... Jay Bear gives you awesome access to a lot of what Alaska has to offer. True. And so, you know, being that it's a broad overview and we didn't really touch anything, we wanted to include uh, some resources for you. So, mm -hmm. you know, the Visit Anchorage website, we're going to go ahead and include that in the links below. Uh, the, J -Bear, the Visit Jay Bear website is pretty informative, right? Yes. So there's lots of things to do on there. Um, I could probably make a whole other video on that, but I'm going to spare you that and I'll kind of just kind of do a brief overview. So if you have any questions about where your kids are going to go to school, uh, family stuff, uh, resources, things like that, there's uh, even resources for the MWR that we which we kind of covered, and then there's links to get tied up into the backcountry scene, yep. right? So there's a lot of good information there. I definitely recommend checking that out if you're going to be PCS into Alaska. So we hope you enjoyed this film. Drop us a comment, drop us a you know, like, hit that subscribe button, and uh, if you want to see anything else or you have some questions, make sure to ask us in the comment section. All right, guys, thanks. Thanks for watching. Hey guys, so we had a lot of fun making that video for you, so please do make a comment down below for some of the content you might want to see in the future. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe and stay tuned in.